Located at one of the crossroads of the world, Singapore's strategic position has helped her grow into a major entrepot and financial center for trade, communications, and tourism. Today, Singapore proudly owns one of the world's busiest ports, best airports, and best airlines. Singapore is also well known around the world as a garden city. Though there are many glittering skyscrapers, there are a lot of green trees and beautiful plants along the roadsides and around the island. This is attributed to the continuous effort of the Singapore government in planting trees and plants. Singapore's uniqueness stems from her harmonious blend of race and culture. The immigrants of the past have given her a mixture of Malay, Chinese, Indian and European. Each racial group has its own distinctive culture and there are colorful festivals of special significance all year round. Although the festivals are special to certain races, it is nonetheless enjoyed by all. With open attitude towards spirituality, sincere truth seekers in Singapore thus invited Supreme Master Ching Hai to share her knowledge and wisdom on several occasions. We now invite you to listen to Supreme Master Ching Hai's lecture entitled, What Makes a Country Great, delivered on March 8, 1993, in Singapore. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit www.godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. I would like to share with you an experience I had. Um, late one night, some months ago, I closed my eyes to go to sleep. A little while later, I heard someone humming a mysterious, eerie tune at close range. And this someone was not a person. It was an invisible being, what you might call a spirit. I heard the tune over and over and I felt a little bit frightened. Then this invisible being clutched my shoulders and then I began to be really afraid. So uh, I couldn't see this thing, but I could feel it, you know, the clutch. And the first thing I thought of was to call to my master for help, which I did about four or five times. And soon after that, I saw myself having arms and hands like a Kuan Yin Bodhisattva, <laughs> many arms and hands. And with these hands, I parted this force that was holding me. And it, it disappeared. And the humming too disappeared. And I saw the Master Ching Hai flying swiftly towards me in a sitting position, um, coming to my rescue. And I felt really protected and confident and happy. And I opened my eyes and the feeling was so overwhelming. This joy, this happiness, this confidence, you know, this total security and this great deep gratitude towards the Master. And after that I never felt any fear for anything or anybody again. Because if you know, I could be safe from that, I could be safe from anything. And I don't think I would ever fear anything again. So I would like to thank the Master Ching Hai. Thank you, Master, for always being there. And thank you. Uh, now, now, Thank you for your love and welcome. I like Singapore. Do you? I think people in Singapore are already in heaven. Huh? <laughs> but due to repeated pressure from the <laughs> enlightened disciples, <laughs> so here I am. I'm very happy and uh, to see Singapore develop better and better each day, yeah. 
and I love to be in Singapore. In fact, this morning I thought maybe I stay here. <laughs> but I don't think I have the fortune, like you, to stay in Singapore all the time and enjoy this luxurious surrounding. And I have learned so much from your country, which is so much like in uh, most of our meditation center. Like we plant, we plant tree, big one, and with leaves and trees and, and uh, say, roots and branches and everything. And then we manage the, uh, the space so that everyone doesn't feel so cramped, even though we have a lot of people. I feel very much in common with Singapore <laughs> system. Therefore, I like it very much. And I hope the world is learning uh, many things from you, the Singapore people and the Singapore government system. And then also I learned about your government. It's very, very clean government, <laughs> very clean. And that pleases me most. Without clean, a clean government, uh, we cannot really serve the people. So I'm happy that you have your paradise on earth. <laughs> and also I heard many good things about Singapore, but you do know already, so I don't need to repeat. Is that right? Hmm. But sometimes we take things for granted <laughs> if we don't appreciate the beauty that other people take effort to, to create. For example, yesterday and this morning, uh, some disciples said to me that, oh, after he uh, get initiation and practice a little bit more, he appreciate more even the ex-Prime Minister Li Guan Yu. <laughs> because I talked to him about how wise he was and he made Singapore become one of the top uh, leading economically and uh, safety-wise in the world. And he said, yes, now he appreciated it more than before, <laughs> before he didn't know much about how difficult it is for the government and so on. And then some of the other disciples say, oh, well, he, before he practiced the Guan Yin method or before enlightenment, he didn't even appreciate that the government planted trees for him, or make the, the road and the surrounding become so clean and orderly. Mm. Only after he became, uh, a practitioner of the Guan Yin method, and he became more enlightened. Then he appreciated more the environment and the service that he get from his country. So actually, uh, in the mundane level, it is also good to be enlightened. Suppose I came here maybe many ten years ago, I wouldn't have appreciated that much your country. I did come here before. In 1972, long time ago, huh? How long ago? 20 years? 20 years, yes, yes. 20 years ago, I came here once as tourist from Vietnam. But I didn't have such a wonderful feeling that I have now toward your country and your people. I just look around without seeing even. <laughs> you look, but you don't see. The trees might grow in front of you, but you don't know it exists. And the people were so nice to you, but you do not have a rapport with them. Understand? You just hang around on the street and you buy food and you stuff yourself with uh, everything that you get when you're hungry, and then you just uh, run around aimlessly sometimes. Maybe you see this and that spot when you sightseeing, but maybe you do not appreciate that much the true beauty of the land. And uh, last time I came here, also only a few days, and this time also a few days. But I do appreciate more than I have uh, uh, ever had done before. It is probably due to the inner opening of love that I had after uh, the initiation, after the practicing of the inner wisdom. Therefore, from my own experience, I can say to you confidently that, that it doesn't matter in what standpoint, what position we are, we should also try to get back our wisdom, to rediscover our own greatness. There are many kinds of consciousness, many levels of understanding. We might be very shrewd, <laughs> and then we might be intelligent, 
but we must be wise mm-hmm. because wisdom is the highest point in the universe and in human life. If we are intelligent, then we may have some uh, very valuable degree in the society or have a high position in the country or among the people on earth. But if we have wisdom, we can attain heaven, even while on earth. I was surprised to hear that some of the Singaporean, like my disciples, they didn't appreciate the work that the government put on the road. <laughs> Only they appreciated it recently. Yes. And I thought, even I appreciate it. Yeah. But then I remember 20 years ago when I first came here to your land, I didn't appreciate that much. I was here, but just like I wasn't here. I still felt like a stranger, you understand, in your land. But this time, or last time I came, I feel I'm part of your land. Yes, I feel the, very much in common with the people. And I appreciate the beauty and the organizational talent of your people and the discipline of the whole country and also the loving enthusiasm of people toward a higher value of life, such as spirituality, discipline, uh, virtues and a uh, more, uh, how to say, inner value, like uh, uh, our own self, our own wisdom, which we really wish to discover. So actually, after all, we need enlightenment. We need to get deep down into our own greatest resource in order to appreciate everything, in order to live truly a good human life, to be a good guest on earth, and then to be at home in heaven. Because we are here only as guests. Everyone knows that. But even at, as guests, we should enjoy the hospitality of the host on earth. Therefore, if we are too busy <laughs> searching happiness in the material world, we will forget the happiness within. Even if we're busy to search the happiness outside, we will not truly appreciate the inner beauty of all things if we have not in possession of true wisdom. Since the ancient time, many sages, saints, enlightened Buddhas, Christ, have graced our earth and have taught us the same message that we look within for all the answers and happiness that we ever imagine or crave to have. Truly, only since I have been somewhat got in touch with my own inner resource that I appreciate life more, that I understand things deeper than before. And so do uh, any of the disciples on our path because of this very deep, unimaginable power of penetration after we get in touch with our inner self that uh, we have the opportunity to see each other today. Just because my fellow practitioners, they believe that what they get, you should also have. Or you may try, or you might get to know at least about it, and then you might think about it whether you want it or not want it. <laughs> Therefore, they arrange this meeting today. I have to thank them especially, the Singaporean practitioners, for all their loving care and the time that they spend to make this uh, grand gathering uh, come true. It took a lot of work. <laughs> and also, I especially thank the the government, the police department, or whomever concerned, that give our permission fast. Therefore, we got it this morning and we started tonight. <laughs> so actually, to the Singapore people, I feel very uh, close and grateful. I'm grateful to you and grateful to Almighty Buddha power that blessed our country. 
I do not feel stranger in your land. I never feel one moment to be stranger. I'm very much at home <laughs> because of the cleanliness, the beauty of the land and the many trees and the people who live a, a safe life and not very much, uh, I would say, nervous, anxious about the future and their uh, living standard. It takes good government and people to work together. But it is because the consciousness of your land is higher than maybe other, a little bit less developed countries. That is why. Because I have been in, uh, in some other places other than Singapore, of course, around the world, and I have noticed very much that the mentality of the land, the spiritual consciousness of the people, go very much with the way the country looks, understand? I don't mean poverty. That makes people uh, in a lower consciousness. It's not true. It's not that. Yeah. For example, Indian is not a so-called very rich land, but their spiritual consciousness is high. What I mean is that the mentality of the people of that land, whether they are open, they are easy, they are disciplined, and they are eager for higher value of life. Not materialistic, no, no, no. It is the difference between materialistic country and high consciousness country. For example, in Singapore, I feel very high consciousness. You just enter and you know it. This is not something I can uh, put it to you in black and white. You just feel it and know it. But anyhow, that's why the country is more open, understand? And you come in, you don't need visa, <laughs> you can stay for two weeks and doing whatever necessary or uh, seeing the land and without much trouble, waiting in the queues or begging for visa for many days, for nothing. <laughs> so what I mean is the total appearance, the total mentality of the land. Of course there will be some exception, the minority of the people, but then most of the people, like in Singapore, are very open and very eager for higher spiritual value. And that you can feel also from the administration, not only by the people, but also from the government itself. Hmm? And then you also see the surrounding, how they keep their house and their streets in perfect order, and things like that. But these are outer value which we can learn. For example, other countries, may uh, come to Singapore and see that your house is very clean, your street is clean, and you plant trees, very big trees, in overnight, etc. <laughs> they may learn from you to do these things. But the inherent quality of the people is difficult to learn. That we must have or we don't have. <laughs> but this inherent quality or the wisdom or the higher consciousness inside we can also learn, but it takes inner discipline, inner awareness to learn this, not the outer discipline, like planting trees or making uh, roads or keeping uh, things nice and in order. Some other countries also they will keep things in order and clean, and they keep the environment green, but they might not have that higher consciousness. So just exactly what makes a country in a more higher consciousness than another country? First, the government. They must be wise, yeah? And then they let other good influence come to their land, and they're willing to learn, to sacrifice for the people. And then they show the people the, how say, the example and then they will learn more from wiser people and they develop more their own wisdom. Therefore, since ancient times, great kings are worshipped by people and beloved by all for many, many thousands of years. And their name will be craved in the heart of the universe. And then, if uh, the system, the governmental system is good, then the people feel more free and at ease, and then they will look for a higher value of life because their material side is satisfied.
their life security is being looked after. But a wise government or the wise people, it takes more to be wise than just looking after people materially. Yes. But that is one of the starting points. And then when we are open to all kind of good influence, then wisdom will come to our land. Blessing will flow forth into our country, and then we will feel better and better, because the people are united, and one in, in one heart to develop the country, and also to bless the nation. If in some country the policy is too restricted, and even if uh, wise people or good people could hardly enter, you understand? Uh, because they fear of uh, criminals or all that. And they make also restriction on wise and good people or sandy people. Then, even though our country is much developed materially, we hardly can keep it very long because we lack the blessing from God. But I feel Singaporean people have this blessing. I know so many religious groups exist in here, and all religions grow together in harmony, and nothing is forbidden in this land, as long as it's good, moral, clean, and uplifting for the people at large. And this is truly a very wise system. I am not coming here to praise you. It is just a general talking maybe for the whole people of the world, that they should know how to make people more happy, how to protect their land without having to use armed forces and spend much money on guns, <laughs> and how to be in harmony with the neighboring countries and other countries of the world, not having to go into conflict with them, by giving them freedom to come and go, but still at the same time uh, protect your country's interest and that to uh, keep the order in the land. If every country just like your country, then it would be nice. Our world would be nicer. <laughs> yes. I hope one day uh, Singapore will develop even in a higher value, better, more inner discipline, more virtues to enhance your already stable and high civilization standard, because we still have more to take from heaven. We still have more to receive from God or from Almighty, from heaven, from Buddha's power, that is, from our inner own resource, because our inner self is connected with heaven. That's why Lao Tzu say, ten thousand things are one. And if we reach that oneness, that greatness within us, then nothing we cannot do. We will have all kind of miraculous power. We will be able to solve all kind of situations in life. We will be able to understand all kind of religious scriptures without anyone having to preach to us. We will keep all kind of virtuous discipline without anyone having to impose it on us. We will be loving with each other without anyone having to teach us to do so. And we will have peace within our heart. And then the peace will radiate outside and help more to make peace on earth. Talking about miraculous power, I think you Singaporean people have already a lot of miracles. <laughs> miraculous power, Yi San Tao Hai. You saw all the hill and put it on the sea. <laughs> put it in the sea. <laughs> I think you have miraculous power. Huh? <laughs> you cut <laughs> the hill and level the sea. This is great power, which we call Yi San Tao Hai. Move the mountains and level the sea. That's great miracle power. I have been able to do that. <laughs> and uh, you move trees so big. Huh? Overnight, you make the whole park green, <laughs> for example. Huh? These are miraculous power. Mm. But if we practice the Guan Yin method, we have even more than that. Yeah. Actually, I feel very much uh, in sympathy with Singaporean. You know why? 
is because of your miraculous power. Yeah. <laughs> I love green environment, cleanliness, but natural, not like every tree is cut, you know, like a monk, you know, cut it, <laughs> or the leaves are cut off like a monk, and then plant over there, and he has to sit there, and the other one has to be a little bit higher, and the other one shorter, just too much orderly, it's also no good. But in Singapore, the plant tree look like it stand there for many hundreds of years, mm. and looks very natural. Mm. Clean order, but not artificial, artificial, that's what I like. And you know why I like it? Because we do the same in our meditation centers around the world. Where there is no trees, we will plant trees. And we plant big trees overnight. Yeah. Same like you do. Yeah? So we have uh, miraculous power in common. <laughs> yes. That's why I like it. When I heard about Singaporean people, how they plant trees and they look after trees, oh, I feel like it so much. I love it. And every month I will give them injection. <laughs> Take care of trees like people. <laughs> uh, really, you have loving nature. That's why many Singaporeans, they say, when they go out, they appreciate their country more. They don't want to stay outside, they want to come back, because the air is clean, the, the trees and all this make the air fresh and absorb all the toxins and give it fresh and nutritious air for the people. And also, even here you have a lot of high buildings, but it doesn't feel oppressive because you plant trees in front. And so it, it, it looks just spread out, and we don't feel very oppressive. It's very good. And also the security system is very, very tight. It's very good. Last night, I went to the beach about 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock at night, because I know in the daytime I w there will be many people. Just I love to be alone whenever possible. So even I love your beach, and I love to have fresh air, but I choose midnight to go out. I just sit, for, I thought I would be left completely alone. I have three, three guards, yeah, the three guys, one is driving and the other two are just standing around in case, <laughs> in case I have to protect them. <laughs> well, they're supposed to protect me, but that's a good looking way of it. Now I thought that I would be alone, you know, because midnight no one would be there. And I sat there enjoying the ocean air and the expanse of the water. And I, in fact, I wanted to swim because no one there. And your ocean is so calm, so calm, no waves, just a little bit. Yeah, and I wanted so much to swim, but I forgot to bring my suit, so I didn't. <laughs> Very much tempted. Yeah, so I didn't swim, and I sat there and meditate for a while. And then, boom, 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 I come. Policemen. <laughs> they wanted to know what we're doing there. <laughs> and they didn't believe that I'm the master, and that the three guys there are my God. <laughs> so we had to uh, answer their formal questions and all that. But still, I feel that they're just doing their duty, understand? They, they worry that uh, maybe something happening to me. Mm. Then I'm alone with the three guys, you know, and they don't look very, very handsome or... <laughs> they don't look... <laughs> maybe they don't look very, how to say, uh, peaceful. <laughs> because some of my so-called disciples, they're very protective with me, because they know it's very valuable for me to be alone sometimes, very valuable time, and I recuperate. Uh, during a tour and hectic time, uh, when I'm alone, they, they know the value, so they protected me very much. So I immediately stood up and said, we are leaving anyhow, we're just taking the fresh air, so please, it's all right, everything's all right. So, by the way, I learned that your system of security is also very, very, very good. Of course, we cannot uh, uh, avoid some trouble sometimes, but even then, uh, consider that is very good, mm. very good uh, security system. Yeah, one thing good about this meditation system is that you can meditate anywhere, except when the police come, yeah. <laughs> and you have to answer him, why you meditate here? <laughs> it was too late, that's why the police came. If I came earlier, it wouldn't be, but because I didn't want to be among people. 
So actually, in this world, even though we have uh, some good system, it's also never good enough. Huh? <laughs> if we want to be alone, then we will have to uh, see the police. <laughs> and if we see the people, and then also we are not alone. <laughs> Anyhow, this meditation, we can sit in the park to do it, even with people around us. And for you, no problem. For me, just because most of the time I see people, I love to be alone, therefore I chose some of the lonely time. <laughs> because if every day I have to sit in my room, you know, the air-conditioned room, I feel sometimes it's very <laughs> lacking of some freedom. <laughs> therefore I love to be in the natural air. But when uh, I go around the world, it's not possible to always be in natural surrounding, like uh, in Taiwan or in other meditation centers. But for ordinary people, if we study this meditation method, we can do it anytime, anywhere, even while standing, waiting for the bus, or sitting on the bus, or sitting on the airplane, sitting in the office, waiting for work, or uh, anywhere while we have time, five minutes even, or ten minutes sometimes, it really gives us refreshing power and then the clearness of the mind so that we can continue to solve the next question, next problem, or to serve in the next job, next work. So the uh, practitioners of meditation since ancient time were sometimes misunderstood. Some people would think meditators are just sitting in the Himalaya or in a cave somewhere or in a monastery and doing nothing. It's not necessarily so especially for Singapore people. <laughs> you have to take care of your land. And for everyone as well, we have duties to perform. I was in the Himalaya, is this correct? But I don't stay there all the time. I didn't have to stay there. Also, it was maybe my destiny that I should be there <laughs> for a while. But you don't have the same destiny like me. <laughs> So you can sit anywhere, at your home, at your office, on the train, on the bus, if you want to get in touch with your inner greatest power, which we call the kingdom of God within, or the Buddha nature inside each sentient being. We heard so much about the inner kingdom of God, the almighty power, the, the God that lives within you, or the Buddha that is in your heart, but we don't experience it. Therefore, if we practice the Kuan Yin method, get the initiation, and then we will realize that kingdom of God is truly within us. And then the Godfather, the Father is really within ourselves, that the Buddha nature really we possess. And that is the purpose of uh, studying the Kuan Yin method. And this kind of experience we can uh, almost immediately know at the time of initiation. That's why we call immediate enlightenment. And we get some taste of this kingdom of God or the power of God or the Buddha nature. And then each day we practice and we get more and more. And then finally we will become one with God. And we and God are one. I and my Father are one. And then we will see all sentient beings is truly Buddha, truly have Buddha nature, whether they discover it or not yet discover it.
Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit www.godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Thank you for your charming presence for today's episode of Words of Wisdom. Join us again on Tuesday for part two of What Makes a Country Great. And now, a journey through aesthetic realms is coming up next, right after Noteworthy News. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. May your heart be filled with joy and the inner peace of heaven. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash W-O-W